Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from the Noble Q, and in this video we're going to take a look at the combined multi-role and fighter line of the German nation, the aircraft of which feature in the Universal Soldiers mission which started on December the 8th, 2021. Hi there. As I make this video we're coming to the end of the Universal Soldiers event, an event in which you've been able to get discounts on the aircraft that are just scrolling into view now. And basically, apart from the Tier 1, these are the aircraft of what I call the combined multi-role and fighter line of the German nation, running from the Tier 2 Heinkel 51 up to a pair of Tier 10s, the Focke-Wulf FW252 and the Blommervoss P21502. And this video is basically a tech tree fly-through featuring all of the aircraft that you can see here, plus the Tier 1. Well, I hope you get something good out of it. And if you want to focus on a particular aircraft, use the links below the video. So let's get into it. Well, good morning to one and all. Welcome to this Sunday morning stream of World of Warplanes by well, your host. Good morning to one and all. Noble Q. Welcome to this Sunday morning. And let me just mute my stream, which has unmuted itself again. I'm sorry for the feedback. Technical glitches are us. Moving swiftly on, what we're going to be doing today is exclusively German. And we're going to be looking at this pair of branch lines Multi-role fighters and fighters down here, starting with the AI, AI, AR-65, through this set of three fighters here, through these multi-roles, and then we'll deal with these two branch lines here, the multi-roles, the BVPs, which are favourites of mine, particularly the Tier 8 and Tier 9, and then the TA-152, 183 and 252, uh, which are not favourites of mine, but we'll see how we get on with them. So, without further ado, lots to get through today. We may take in a premium um, Focke Wolf 190A8 if we have time. And since time is an issue today, we're going to jump into the Tier 1 straight away and have a little bit of a warm up battle in it. Not much to say about this. It's a Tier 1, it's relatively maneuverable, it has the kinds of guns that you would have at Tier 1. Actually, I say relatively maneuverable, it is, but compared to some of the other Tier 1s, it's not so maneuverable. It's got a couple of rockets, uh, bombs, so let's get stuck in. Hello, Klausowitz! And dawn is breaking in the UK. I should imagine we're actually in um, civil twilight now, as opposed to nautical twilight or astronomical tw twilight, as I call it. Yes, twilight is split into three different definitions. I even know them. How? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to afflict that knowledge upon you. Okay, so the AR-65. One of the first aircraft you're in, you'll encounter in the game. Uh, we've got somebody, we've got a tier two battle. That's straight away not so great. And we've got somebody in an XP-31, which is a recognized seal clubbing aircraft, although it's not specialized and somebody in a specialised goldfinch. We have two tier ones, both specialised. We'll see how we get on. First order of business is to catch the nearest airfield. I know, big buck. And even more than that, the fact that I sent you a message deep into your evening saying, I'm online, come and watch me now. Good to have you along, big buck. Yeah, it is deep into your morning as well. It's one o'clock in Arizona, uh, in the other. You're part of the United States. <laughs> uh, since you mentioned it, the definitions of those three... St no. I'm glad to have, long have you along, Buck. I don't know why you're not sleeping, but I'm glad to have you along. Let's take out the ones that are threatening me first. Okay, he's on the I-5, so I will need to kill this one. There we go. I-5's done a good job. Okay, so question is, since we've both come to the airfield, one of us probably needs to get to the garrison. Where's the I-5 going? If I'd seen where he had gone, I would have gone to the opposite location. 
trouble is I think he's following me. And frankly, he'd be right to follow me. So I think what we're going to do here, try and take the garrison and then we'll try and get across to this airfield. The bots are struggling. They need a little bit of a hand. Yes, but if it was DST uh, where you are, Buck, wouldn't it be two o'clock in the morning? You can see the first raiders are coming in from the enemy. And just as they do that, actually, we take it. So, that happens. So I'm going to ping this and hope the I-5 comes with me. But a nasty feeling the I-5 has uh, been sucked into fighting in this sort of area. Which is not good. Oh, the XP-31. Okay, I hope he doesn't know how to handle his aircraft. Because if he does, I'm in a huge amount of trouble. And he managed to get my wing first shot, so I need to try and take his out. Would you believe he's now got my tail? I'm dead duck. Powerful guns on the XP-31. Yeah, I've got no chance here now. Two volleys at me, two critical hits. Nothing I could do about it. So what we'll do is we'll spawn at the airfield and we'll now try to go around and take this garrison because the XP-31 is effectively blocking my way across here. And those of you who don't know, if you ever see the XP-31 come up and you're still at low tiers, I hesitate to say I recommend the aircraft, but it is very powerful. Probably the second best tier 2 aircraft in the game. No, I'm not going to tell you what the best is. Well, okay, I will. It's the I-5 Shikass. Let's clear out this uh, enemy attack, and then we'll try and get to that garrison. We're going to have to get do it fairly quickly as well, because we're losing our garrison, not surprisingly. There we go. Fortunately, we clung on to our gar garrison, so this has got to be an effective attack. Try and use the bombs, try and get the aircraft down. So, roughly what I'd hope to be able to do... Ooh, that XP-31 has actually come all the way over here. Fortunately, he's going to the airfield. He hasn't spotted me, or he's decided not to go for me. I'm going to try and take out two of the aircraft here, and if I can... One of the gun, two of the gun emplacements. In fact, I'm just going to make sure of it. I'm going to get... Gun emplacement. Alright, so the heavies have bracketed me. I think I've avoided that. Let's get to the fighters. And there's another one. Specialised aircraft. It's the Goldfinch. So, basically, well played to the enemy team. They have split up. and they're making it very difficult to capture their sectors. Ooh, sorry for that noise. I'm surprised I've got the better of him, but I'm probably going to get shot down by the air defence aircraft before I get him. I didn't. And I captured the sector. Too late for you, you've come over here. Too late, I'll go back there. Try and capture the airfield. How's my i5 doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not the i5. He's doing all right. I need to support him more strongly. Um, my bad luck is though that I've found both of the enemy players in different locations. I've managed to deal with one of them. I was a little bit unlucky with the XP-31 insofar as he clipped my, both my wing and my tail in his first uh, pair of volleys. From the way he was turning, I felt that if I could get behind him, I would have shot him down. Now, I should imagine he's going to come back to this airfield, so we may have an opportunity to find out whether that's true or not. Anyway, let's get, on, get to it here. Mm 
Oh, I didn't destroy that ground target. That's interesting. Nor the ground attack for the moment. What we're interested in is trying to get the um, fighters out. Got that ground target. Is that... Yeah, okay, good stuff. Now we're cooking on gas. Now we will chase down the ground attackers. Be good if I could get them out so that they don't come back, but we're 10 seconds away. May have to settle on killing this one, since there's an enemy uh, aircraft trying to shoot it down already. Oh no, once it's down it's going to be gone. Good. Did we get into the lead? We did. So what we have, we hold, we win. Let's get this ground attacker out. Make sure there's no threat to the garrison. That's all done. Now then, the XP31. Are we going to find out whether or not I can outturn him? Turned the wrong way. He's in serious trouble now. He's got both of us on him. Between us, I'm pretty sure we can take him out. And that's the big threat gone. Okay. Hard fought victory, I think, coming in. Unless something disastrous happens at the airfield. Nothing's happening there, so I don't think that's going to be the case. Good. We want to target this chap. Oh no, wrong decision. He shouldn't have come at me. He should have tried to get round me. And that pretty much seals the victory. Well, nice to have a competitive tier 1 battle actually. I wasn't necessarily expecting that. And it just goes to show that, you know, even at low tiers, slow comparatively, it can still be interesting. I'm not recommending if you're experienced to fly at low tiers, but this has been quite an interesting battle. And it's been a close one as well. Yep, look at that. Nine points between us. And a win. There we go. Can't be bad. Okay, so we're on our way. The tech tree has started. We're the win. Let's go into the tier two. Now, we come away from multi-rolls initially, and the next three aircraft are going to be fighters. <laughs> we'll leave the crates. Okay, so what have we got? We've got the HE-51 coming up. Well, this is quite a powerful plane. Let's just quickly do the comparison, but we're going from a multi-role to a fighter. Gun armament hasn't gone up. Obviously, there are no bombs and rockets on a fighter, so it, you see the minus three figure there. That survivability is a little bit stronger for the tier two. Airspeed goes up. Maneuverability significantly up, as you would expect, because this is a fighter, and it's not. Uh, we're not yet getting into the realms of high energy fighting. Beginning to slide into that with the next one, but we'll talk about that then. Altitude performance a little bit improved. HE-51, so let's now have a look at it. Well, I've done quite a bit of work in the past on this aircraft. That's a lot of uh, uh, kill markers. Pilot has got all the uh, skills that would encourage maneuverability to get it up to a figure of 95. We've got a lightweight weight airframe and a gun sight. So, HE-51, I think this is... Um, one of the best tech, tech tree tier twos. Let's get in and see how we can do with it. Ah, 
I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> Let's put it this way. The DST big uh, buck, uh, I've got a 50% chance of getting it right anyway. So if I got it right, lucky me. I mean, suppose it, where part of the, the states that you're in, where they don't vary the clocks anyway, uh, I suppose they would have a choice of either B or um, what would be the DST equivalent. So Arizona is going to be mountain time, so you could go to central time. Yes. Yes. Or as we autumn, as we call it over here. Okay, so... Same map, different uh, variant, Battle for Port. This time we've got a central garrison to scrap over. I'm going to go straight to the airfield again. I'm top tier. There's an AR-68. I think that may be the goldfinch from the previous battle. He fought well. And Type 91 as well. So, uh, AO-192. If that's well flown, we've got a big advantage. If it's not well flown, then it doesn't matter. Okay, airfield for me, and this is going to be typical turn fighting, so you're going to see the Noble Q's favourite playstyle. And uh, indeed you saw the favourite playstyle if you happen to have visited my YouTube channel, my latest videos on the Tier 10 Lovotchkin LA-15, and that's a typical turn fighting Noble Q performance as well. Just in case some of you are not aware. But I have a YouTube channel. Oops. Very nearly knocked over my cup of tea there. Fortunately, it's empty. Oh, well done. I think I just saw my specialised friend crash straight into the ground. He's heavily damaged. Oh, something's got on my tail, so we need to drop round. There we go. Uh, inconveniently held up by my uh, teammate smashing himself into the ground. Right, okay, so that's actually delayed us getting to the centre, which means that the enemy looks like they're going to take it. I'm going to have to wrench it away from them again. Okay, they've got their airfield. Yeah, they're going to take it. This uh, grand attack is going to be killed, and that'll be enough for the capture. No, we're not going to do collidey collidey. We're going to do turny turny, okay? Oh, you little so and so. Okay, so you're going to throw yourself into the ground into in your panic. He was actually doing okay there, except that he threw himself into the ground. Pity I shot that down. Then, wow, they are 68 now. Still struggling with the wing. And despite having the wing, I'm still able to kill the AR-68, which is good news. But I'm in a very weak position here in terms of my hit points. Lucky boy, got me when I was very low health, otherwise I think I'd have had him. Okay, so we need to clear out the airfield, then we need to try and take that. We were making inroads, uh, they've all gone backwards again. And unfortunately our AO, AO192 is being completely ineffective. In fact, there he is, wandering around doing nothing. A well-flown AR-192 on this map would make a huge difference. Okay, come on. Alright, let's go and clear the other two rapscallions out. And let's try again to get that middle, but uh, I can see what's happening here. My, unless I'm there, my team is unable to deal with the specialised aircraft managed to actually get a lot of aircraft here. Uh, 
That's too far away for me to bother with right now. Is he going to turn? Okay, so we've neutralised the attack. Let's finish it off, mop it up. But we've got zero presence in the middle. My team is being extremely ineffective. Uh, where's the heavy? The heavy got himself shot down somehow over here. He's just respawned. So basically, if I'm going to get any sector, I'm going to have to do it myself. And I know the humans are hanging around here, so it might be better to go off and pick this one. Not that I'm particularly worried about them one-on-one, -on -one, but the problem is it's not going to be one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, you can see there's at least three of them, four of them, three of them, in that area. He's going to try and kite me away, apparently. Good bots. Got me flying in exactly the opposite direction to the one I want, but if I turn, let him go, he'll probably come back for me. Yeah, as you can see, my team's making zero impact on the middle. In fact, we're going to lose our local garrison as well. How's our heavy doing? He's down again, and he has the princely sum of 415 points. Okay. So basically, we've got a player who can't play. Sadly. Well, here's tier 2. Everybody has to start and learn somewhere. is that fighter had to break off let's finish him off now good good right now that's given the enemy something to think about although with 200 points lead they're probably not too concerned Okay. <laughs> I think the two humans are still over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go approach and see if I can work out how much health they're on. If they're on low... Well, he's on pretty full health, so that's not good. He's on pretty low health, though. I'm going to have a go. Let's accept the challenge. 4,000. I might get to... I'd like to get to him first. out that the air defence aircraft don't ping me. Right, let's get rid of this one first. If we can. Okay, where's the other one? It appears to have gone for the moment. Yeah, that's the human. Okay, unfortunately, all that's happened there is that I've managed to get us back to three sectors. I have knocked down the two humans. I think one of them is not going to come back. Now we need to try and take the airfield, unfortunately. I'm going to do it fairly quickly. We're running out of time. Good morning, Stowaway. How are you? Oh, I would have liked to have killed him in the first pass. I'm feeling the pressure of time here. Oh, 
Okay, we've got to play with the golf. Oh! Garbage! He got my engine. Got to try and keep the nose down. I must try and get into the yellow, into the white here. Otherwise, he's going to outturn me. Get some speed up. It's at least equal. I can keep. Oh, don't fly at me. Good God. If you're flying, don't fly with me. Fly the opposite direction. Good God. <laughs> Basic rule. If you've got two aircraft on one, you fly in opposite circle patterns because the other aircraft can't get on the tail of both of you then, and you've got an opportunity. It looked like that uh, Type 91 was flying in the same circle as me. And we've managed to claw a win. I'll tell you what, those have been two good low-tier battles. Don't always see that. I've enjoyed both of those. Just give me a second while I pick up the things I've been throwing on the floor, my toys. Very well contested battles there. Um, I've enjoyed those, surprisingly. Can't say I normally enjoy flying at low tiers, but uh, two good ones there. Okay, so it's time to play the tier three. And things change here. Oddly, I would say. The FW159. And I've built it for speed, so it's going to be nowhere near as manoeuvrable as the uh, HE-51. And it's not going to be as manoeuvrable as the HE-112 either, which I've built for manoeuvrability. And I'm, you know, if this was a higher tier aircraft, I have to say I might actually experiment with building it for manoeuvrability. But um, let's just do the quick comparison, bearing in mind that I've got two very different builds on the, uh, the tier 2 and the tier 3. So we can see that the gun armament is considerably better at tier 3. Uh, survivability a little bit higher. Airspeed are quite a considerable whack higher, partly because of the way I've built it. Maneuverability is a lot less. And the altitude performance is quite a, a, a significant increase. So what have I done with this aircraft? Well, whether or not I've assessed it correctly in the past, I've put on polished skin and uprated engines. So I've gone for a speed build here. I'll be doing high energy fighting in this as far as I can. And if I get into a tier four fight, that's not going to be great. I'm not actually sure what would happen if I put on um, the lightweight wing frame and the lightweight power unit. It might be worth trying. That would probably go up to about 90, I would guess. I might be able to get it a little bit higher. Probably 88, 90, something like that. And I'll probably be... If I got the pilot with the correct skills, uh, aerodynamics and acrobatics, I should have put aerodynamics on first anyway. We'll do that. And we'll pay gold to do it because I've got far too much gold. Okay, so that should have been the first skill, really. And we'll put on Eagle Eye just for the moment. No, we won't because we've only got 40,000 to go. Okay. And we're going to be trying to rely on our speed. Now, as I say, if as is likely we get into a tier four battle, that's probably not going to work. And probably I should have built that for maneuverability and just accepted that it was going to be a little bit less maneuverable than many of the other aircraft in theory. But I could probably compensate for that with my pilot skills. And it is a little bit odd that I've it's odd that this aircraft suggests it's, that it lends itself to a speed build, whereas the previous one and the next one, well, I suppose the HE-112 could be built for speed, but it's, it's very effective with maneuverability. Okay, so we'll try and use as much height and as much speed at all points, and I'm right, this is a Tier 4 battle. However, the Tier 4 on the enemy team is a bomber, and they just have the three specialised aircraft over there. The Focke-Wulf 57, mm, that's a favourite seal clubbing aircraft, and another Focke-Wulf 57, another, two famous 
a notorious seal clubbing aircraft at tier 3 and an I-16E okay this is not the right sort of map for this to be dominant that really needs a central airfield this is going to be a tricky battle potentially depends on how well flown the enemy aircraft are I'm going to have to hope that I get into the position where I can contest the Fokker Wolf 57s Good news. Let's go over and try and get here. Let's use all of the boost, because we'll have it back by the time we get there. And probably if I'm hunting Focke Wolf 57s, I will want all of my boost. So it looks like we're going to have to seize this, if we can, seize this uh, uh, garrison from the enemy. And that is going to be the case because they've now got it. And both Focke 57s are over here, which is not great news. I was hoping they might split up. Let's get straight on to him. If I die to the bot, I die to the bot. If I don't clear out at least one of these humans immediately, we're not going to have much chance of getting this. I should think that's the other one. Yep. It's a damn shame my pilot's out. I'm going to have to break off. I haven't got the necessary accuracy. too many. I'm in the middle of at least four aircraft there. I've got one of the heavies down. The trouble is you can see what's going to happen here. I am going to have to devote a few set, a minute or two to clearing out this, our garrison here. And if I go to this garrison it might actually be smarter to go over there and try and sneak one up the enemy's leg. altitude for speed at the moment. I want to try and make sure the bomber goes down and then I'll go down for the ground attacker. But already I'm feeling the pressure of time. This is taking too long. The bomber's gone down. That's good news. Let's clear out the ground attacker and then try and get to the enemy's local garrison where they may not expect us. trouble is we're going to get sucked into defending this and defending this and defending this, potentially. Let's hope he doesn't know how to turn. And the answer is he doesn't, otherwise he'd have beaten me or hands up. to go and support the attack over there. That's our best chance. Although we mm -mm. Yeah, we haven't got very much at the other garrison. And I think probably both heavies are stuck there. That's what I'm hoping. Having said that, I can see at least one's over there, so it won't be too bad if uh, there's one heavy over here either. It looks like we may take that without my intervention, actually. That's interesting. Still, an attack from the other side will be good as well, because they won't be expecting me to come from that direction. I'm going to leave the ground attacker. I will take this though because otherwise it will glue onto my tail. Still haven't taken this. We're definitely really behind in terms of time now. And the 
Fokker Wolf has seen what's coming and they're far away. I've got no choice but to actually face up to the Fokker Wolf. And he's caught me just when I'm out without boost as well. So he's probably going to just be able to fly away from me. And you know what? We've obviously got a bomber, bomber up the top and they've finally taken this scepter. So I'm just going to try and trap this guy in the corner so he can't do anything else. What a shame. And I had hoped we might capture this because we've distracted them over here. That doesn't look like it's going to happen. I could have probably dealt with the Fokker Wolf 57 on my own, but of course the other aircraft came in. I might have been better just leaving that sector there. But I wanted to trap the Fokker Wolf. Yeah, they've taken it back already and we've got nowhere with taking this. Even though we've dragged half their team over there now. So they'll probably be able to get there about the same time as me. So what have we got? You're too low. There's going to be meat and drink for this guy coming in. Good work, guys. You took taking it anyway, and you needed to take it. Now we need to hold. Half considered waiting to the score line for him. Oh, what I could do with some boost here. Exactly what I said happened. Our heavy was too low. Meet and drink to this guy now. I want him to just fly away. No, too late. We did the right things, but we did them too slowly. Uh, to be fair, I think that was quite competitive considering they had all the advantages with two um, seal clubbing heavies. Um, just not quite enough of a contribution from my um, teammates to win that game. Uh, but the plan and the tactics, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, our, our Focal 57 wasn't effective enough. He really needed to uh, make himself uh, a nuisance to the, the two Focal 57s. If we'd been able to work in tandem, we might have been able to put, uh, win that game. But another competitive game. Not one in the win column, unfortunately, but uh, decent. And as I say, you might want to experiment with uh, a maneuverability build there. Maneuverability would not have helped me at all in that battle. I needed every inch of ounce of speed I could muster if I was to try and combat the Fokker 57s. I didn't do it particularly effectively. I never really got the opportunity. Only shot one of them down. But a bit of an outlier there. This one sort of tending towards speed rather than maneuverability. So we come to a favourite tier 4 aircraft of mine, the HE-112. Let's just do the comparison. And this one, I, HE-112, I have built for uh, manoeuvrability, so don't be surprised when you see that the manoeuvrability figure is much, much, much better. Uh, gun armament has gone up quite a lot. I'm going to discuss the gun armament on this one in a little bit more detail. Airspeed, 8. has gone up by 8. Manoeuvrability, we just mentioned altitude performance has gone up. This is a pretty good altitude performance. Not like the BF-109, which is also at tier, tier 4, but decent nonetheless. And the gun armament is interesting on this. It's split between 20mm cannons and they have a range of 1,903 feet. That's useful. And then for maximum damage, sorry, I say 20 millimeter cannons, I mean one 20 millimeter cannon. Oops, that's the wrong aircraft. I thought it was two, there we go. 20 millimeter cannons, 1,903 feet, and then two machine guns, which only fire at 1,400 feet. So up close, this is devastating, but you can pick apart aircraft at quite a long distance. But as with the 20 mm always with the 20 millimeters, you need to manage them. I've built this for maneuverability, so all the skills that you would expect to see are there. Aerodynamics, acrobatics, and then a little bit of engine guru and marksman one to improve accuracy and speed. I've even got a piece of experimental equipment 
on there on the lightweight wing frame and lightweight power units. And this is a highly competitive aircraft and the maneuverability build is the style that suits me. Now you could do a full speed build on this and I just, I just think it's slightly lacking in the altitude performance to be able to exploit that completely. Uh, whereas the BF109 uh, uh, B at tier four certainly can. So let's see what we can do with this tier four aircraft. Hello, M Pet Slayer. Nice to see you. And after this aircraft, we then cut back to multi rolls. So a vast difference. Okay, well, I, like most people, I'm not that fond of this map. Saving grace here is that we're on the right side of it. I'm going to go and capture the airfield and see what's what. What have we got against us? It's a tier five battle, so okay, that's going to exercise me. We have a Hurricane and a BF 109E, an 916 late modification, another HE112. They have a Spitfire and specialised BF 109E, that is. A Grand Attacker. BF-19B and F2A and BF-110B. Well, apart from possibly the Spitfire, I should be able to outturn everything. Depending on how the BF-109E is built, that may be a bit of a tight squeak, but I should be able to outturn it. Now, I tend not to open up at 900 feet. on air defence aircraft, I like to get to a range where all the guns will hit for maximum destructive potential. Okay, wow. Okay, that's quick. Both sectors within 30 seconds of the start of the battle. Okay, well, we could just sit and wait for them to come to us. That will probably be very boring. So I think we're going to go off and be aggressive. Right, okay, so we've seen the heavy trying to get me. Don't want any of that. Because what I want to fight is... Well, it's not really that. But that'll do. I was actually hoping to contest the BF-109. That's a bad fire. He should go out now. Don't know where the BF-109 went. Looks like he went back to the command centre. Uh, I'm going to try and support the command, command centre. Although I noticed my team have all left the garrison and the enemy has sneaked in behind them. That's a bit of a nuisance. I'm committed now, so I have to do it. Let's get somebody to focus the bomber. That's actually one aircraft I don't want to go head on with. It's also pretty nimble for a multi roll, but we have it now. Thank you for trying to get in my way. See if we can get hold of this. That should blow out. Uh, the one behind me shot it, of course. You know, chum, we would get on quicker if you'd select targets that are different to mine. Okay, what can we do here? 
I think we've actually cleared out all the air defence aircraft. Oh no, what's coming in? Is it worth it? Yeah, let's chase him. That should do. He's on fire. Okay, so... Everything worked here. Not a particularly great map to demonstrate the capabilities of this aircraft. Central airfield would have shown you much more how, manoe how much more manoeuvrable this aircraft is than most that it fights. But it's got pretty good altitude performance as well. I've not been troubled by anything in this battle. I must admit I haven't seen the Spitfire anywhere. He's quit. That's not good. <laughs> Probably see the Spitfire now. Oh, wasn't paying attention. Didn't see the Spitfire. I suspect I would have been able to outplay him given the score that he's got there. And the asymmetric map works in our favour. We were never th threatened. Okay, probably the least interesting battle of the morning. Um, but we've done well so far. We've had uh, three really close battles. Uh, and this one. So that could have been a lot worse for the low tiers. And we're moving into mid tiers now. And here we change. Grumbles, hello! So this is a good moment since um, we're about to uh, move into the multi-rolls. Currently heavily involved with moving uh, state and interstate move, but so not streaming as far as I know, but uh, Buck is an excellent streamer of a variety of games. It was last seen World of Warplanes. How on earth did you get suckered into that, Buck? And of course our friend Grumbles the Dwarf is uh, a great streamer of ships and indeed also War Thunder and he was last seen playing War Thunder so do I do recommend you go and have a look at their channels and give them a follow okay let us move into something completely different as Monty Python says and now for something completely different we are going to go and look at the tier 5 Focke Wolf 190 A1 Nearly universally derided this aircraft in the game. Not strong enough weaponry, not at all mobile, not really enough ordnance to make a much of a difference, um, but we'll see what we can make of it. Now, the clue is in the fact that we're moving from a fighter to a multi roll so the comparison that we're bringing up. Gun armament has gone up. I would have liked to have seen it gone up quite a bit more given this is a multi roll and in theory a horizontal boom and zoomer. It does have grand attacking capability as a multi-role, bombs and rockets. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Survivability's gone up. Airspeed is quite a bit higher. And uh, we'll see how I've built it shortly. Now the maneuverability crashes. And I mean it crashes. This is a real flying brick. And given that in real life Focke Wolf 190s were able to outmaneuver Spitfire 15s, the game doesn't reflect that reality whatsoever. The altitude performance has not improved. Well, it's a multi-role, you wouldn't expect it to be up flying high. So let's go and have a look and see how, what we've got here. Gun armament, still the 220mm cannons, um, 1969 range, just a slight increase on the previous aircraft, but this time four 7.92mm machine guns, but they're only 1,444. So for an aircraft which you can't dogfight with, you have to get up pretty close to do all of your DPS of 254. Look at bombs and rockets, what have we got? Four SD-50s, I take that to mean 50 kilograms. Well, that's probably a couple of gun emplacements. Maybe a secondary target or something like a mining plant if you drop all four of them. Not brilliant, no rockets. Survivability, we've already talked about airspeed. We don't really need to look at these figures. Maneuverability is um, trash. Uh, probably worth looking at the climb rate. Horrible. Dive rate? Mm, okay. But the fact of the matter is, this is going to be flown in straight lines, ideally, horizontally, straight lines. Quite a good looking aircraft, I think. I've got the chrome build on. Now, how have I built it? Unsurprisingly, I've gone for the speed build, improved polished skin. You'll notice these aren't um, 
I haven't spent any time upgrading this aircraft. It's not one I'd come and fly by choice, frankly. I don't like it very much. Gun sight, polish skin, upgraded engine, and we've got the improved long gun barrels, which is a surprising choice for me. I normally go for a rate of fire, but this extends the range. We'll keep it as it is. Let's go and see what we can do. And I'll be straightforward. I think this is a pretty limited aircraft. It just doesn't have the power uh, to knock things down in front of it sufficiently. It was about this point when Cinder the Cat produced an unwelcome intervention. In seeking a hot uh, spot on top of my computer, she trod on the button and switched it off. So what I've done is I've put this short intermission in and edited together the first part of the stream and what became the second part of the stream. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into this again. Apologies for that uh, unwelcome interruption. Such a lovely cat, Cindy, as well. It's not her fault, obviously, but uh, I will have to take precautions in future now that I know that they can step on the uh, off button, which is recessed. I didn't actually think they could step on it, um, but there you go. Okay, well, I get into a top tier battle. Uh, we've got a Yak-7 against us, which can outmaneuver me quite easily and can shoot me at long range, so that's a bit of a nuisance. BF-109E, powerful aircraft, very difficult to deal with. Could be too high for me. P-40 probably will be. Maneuverable IR-153DM. Okay, I-43. Okay. So our first order of business is to take the local garrison. I'll probably stay at altitude and try and pelt the, the heavies rather than go for the air defence fighters. Normally doesn't take too long to capture this sector anyway. Of course the heavies are flying away. That's the other one. Yep, there he is. Went for the bomber, as they always do, so that's good. If they can, that is. Great, okay, both heavies. Okay, so I'm going to try and keep the altitude as high as I can, although I am going to drop it a little to get out of the yellow, or maybe on the edge of the yellow zone, and we'll try and take the heavies here. You need to keep this aircraft as part of a group as, as far as is possible. Don't let it get isolated. If you get isolated, and you're, then you're easy prey. help the uh, heavy that's doing some very good work on this up, up top and now with a bit of luck we'll be able to dive. It's pretty good dive speed as you saw. Not needed. P40 is too low. Certainly not going to turn with him though. That's not often you say that against a P40. Oh, he's picked me out. That's interesting. Oh no, possibly it was my own player who was shooting him. Shooting me, rather. Okay. Don't really need repairs, but we'll just pick them up because it's a very good habit, as I always say. Now, where's my team going? Decisions, decisions. One heavy going off to the local garrison of the enemy. I don't think I want to go there. Let's follow the rest of the team into the centre. It's pretty much what I expected. Let's just try and adjust my position. I'm too far away from the uh, computer and the keyboard. Looks like I'm going to have to shoot aircraft rather than bomb anything. And that wasn't an awful lot of damage against the uh, Grand Attacker. I would have liked more. We've got it. And that's the value of staying as part of a group. I'm perfectly well aware I was being attacked there, but in being attacked, the aircraft that was attacking me opened himself up uh, to be shot down. And we've lost our local garrison. Now where's my team going? I'm gonna go and try and take the garrison back. 
yes I'll be isolated but the enemy probably won't be here and I'll just have to deal with the, uh, the air defence aircraft and I've got a supporting fighter would have loved to have shot that bomber down but he's too high for me I can't climb that was awkward the bow fighter spawned or not quite on top of me but certainly in a position where they could easily get rams the way the AA almost always shoots directly in front of you to obscure your vision of the bots. No, he's coming for me. I actually don't want to go up against his guns. I want to outturn him. Easy meet now. And that takes a set. Good. Ground attacker there. Oh, Yak-7. Want to hit that if I can. Jolly good. Mm. Seriously? You couldn't see me coming, bot? That'll be dead before I turn for it. Not enough damage. Just not quick enough. It's not really what you want, an undergunned boom and zoomer. threats, where are my team? Need to be aware of both. So he's a long way up. That would tend to suggest to me he's not in the game. Uh, do we really want to attack this? Yeah, we've got uh, planes going in, so I think we'll give it a go. And you'll see the entirety of this battle I've been trying to fight in conjunction with my team. It's really important you do it, do that with an aircraft like this. You basically need friends to keep, get, keep you out of trouble. I mean, that's generally true anyway, but particularly so with an aircraft like this. That looks pretty much like an AFK aircraft as well. I know we've got a Spitfire that's jumped out of our team, so... Yeah, I had to face, turn and face, otherwise that Yak would probably have shot me. But now we're just spawn camping. That's another one that looks AFK. Okay, so this is a much better battle to illustrate what you can do with the Fokker Wolf and how you should fly it. It's particularly important. He's on fire. It's particularly important to note the, bus the point about fighting as part of a team. You don't want to get isolated. That's your best bet for a successful game. I may have just got myself into an awkward position here. Oh well. The answer is no. Their specialised aircraft went down. There we go. Supre prim 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 Supremacy. And a decent game. Okay, I am top tier. So, I had that advantage. But I hope you saw there that I very deliberately and consciously throughout the entirety of that game 
was checking where my team was and only flew into sectors to contest them if I had support. Don't get isolated in this aircraft. You're easy pickings if you do. Yeah, and I'll say, not too shabby. The guns are underpowered, at least I feel they're underpowered. They don't knock aircraft down quickly enough for something that's really dependent on its guns to do all its work. So let's just have a quick look at chat. Yeah, I can just imagine cat repellent going through the, um, the, the the ventilator of the computer would do the insides of the computer a lot of good. But other than that, not a bad idea. I don't really want to repel my cats. I just don't want them to switch my computer off. Yes, cleats. Yes, it's not particularly a popular line. Of course, this is going to take a long time to update here because it's effectively just booted into the game. Oh, no, it shouldn't do. I actually started it naturally. It's just being slow. Yeah, I would say that the Focke, the tier 5 Focke Wolf is... I'm pretty sure people would regard this as the worst Focke Wolf in the game. I mean, the premium tier 7 isn't great, but this one just feels undergunned and un underpowered, which is a bad combination for something that's depending on its guns and its power. So we'll go to the tier 6, and the situation, I feel, changes considerably. Gun armament leaps up. Now we truly do have a Boom and Zoomer. Bombs and rockets, considerable improvement. We'll take a look at that in a moment. A little bit of extra survivability. Speed is much greater. Maneuverability, unfortunately, has gone down more, but frankly, you're already starting from a very low base. Um, therefore, um, you're not really losing a great deal. Altitude performance has gone up a little, but it's still a multi-roll. But here, we've gone from one extreme to the other. We've gone from a pretty mediocre aircraft to one that potentially is extremely good. This is a beast in the right battle, and if you fly it correctly, Gun armament, three groups, two sets, four 20mm cannons. Just look at that, and they fire at 2,362 feet. Let's see if there's any... Um, well, yeah, actually, the small point here, you'll notice that damage output is 90 per cannon per second for these, the wing-mounted ones. They have actually adjusted it for the ones that fire through the propeller slightly. It's 80. They don't always do that in Wargaming, but they do here. And then you've got 13mm... Um, 30 millimeters at fire at 1640. Cumulative DPS at 1640, 440. Massive. Bombs and rockets. You've got the four bombs. This time you've also got a couple of rockets. Well, good for finishing off things that don't get completely blown up by your bombs is how I tend to view that, or maybe finishing off a, a target that something else is damaged. But it is an increase in uh, ground attacking capability and welcome for that reason. This is all about airspeed. And you'll see, let's jump down straight away. I have built this in such a way that it goes quickly. Polished skin, uprated engine, gun sight, of course, because you want to concentrate that massive 440 DPS. Pilot, unsurprisingly, has aerodynamics expert, and then it's about the engine and the uh, Marksman 1 skills. And that's what I'll be concentrating on acquiring next. Just to ram home the point, there we go. We just finally look also to see what I did with the guns. Reinforced bolt carriers for extra burst lengths, burst length, so you can do more of that 440 DPS. Standard setup of consumables. As I say, if you can get this into the right battle and you don't get yourself isolated, you could be mighty in this thing. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, when I say the tier cliques, when I say the tier five is mediocre, it's in comparison to the other the Focke Wolves. And as you saw, I did struggle to put down the ground attackers, even though I was top tier in that game. You can imagine what I'd be doing against a tier seven grand, uh, tier six ground attacker uh, with that tier five Focke Wolf. You would be struggling, and since you haven't got maneuverability on your side, um, you really do want the guns to be potent. So I feel it struggles there, but that doesn't mean to say that it can't be successfully played. After all, I've just come out with a Marseille medal there. <laughs> you are the zone. Right Bottom tier. Bad start. We have a B-32. Klausowicz is in the uh, enemy team. He's in an S-199. And Jean-267 is in A-6M5. I don't know Jean. I just fancy saying Jean. Okay. Fairly, there is a 
kind of a counter argument here for going for the garrison in order to try and capture it first so that when the enemy gets their command center the bombers fly all the way over here i don't tend to subscribe to that theory so we'll be off to the command center as usual <laughs> Maybe I should just paint it red. <coughs> I'm going to try and take out these two gun emplacements here. Apologies for the cough. And then maybe see if we can use the rockets. To finish off another ground target. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, I actually got one of those targets. I must have slightly missed something. And that's where I had it still been necessary to do so. I would have turned back and probably finished off that ground target uh, with my um, rockets. Now then. Hmm, it's tricky, this one. Do I help support my heavy? Or do I go and try and take the garrison with the ground attacker? Well, the fact of the matter is probably the enemy is going to get the ground attacker. Uh, sorry, the enemy is going to get the garrison. So I'm going to try and support the attack on the airfield. But this is tricky. In neither case have I got sufficient concentration of numbers that I would want to feel safe about going in to attack this particular sector. better letting him damage that enemy heavy. I've got something in my tail. I do not want to face it yet. Now I do. Yeah, I'm isolated. Look, I'm the only aircraft in here. This is really bad news. My team is for really, really making it difficult for me. We've got zero presence where I need to be, where I am. I, where did you come from? Yeah, I've had it. Yak-9, can't outturn it. It can shoot me at extreme range. And as you saw, my team emptied, emptied out here quite badly. We're going to lose the command centre as well to the bomber flight. And the B-32 has taken their command centre. I'm really ha going to have to be carried by the, the, um, the B-32 here. The problem is we haven't got enough human players in this battle. And here's a significant point. If you don't have human players that you can follow, you cannot rely on the bots grouping up for you. And as you can see, none of them are flying towards the command center that we need to be flying towards. They're all heading towards the airfield, so I've got no choice. I've got to go to the airfield as well. I'm going to see if I can get this bomber out, although it's a little bit high. I don't want our bomber flight to be assaulted by this. Good. That's worth doing that. I know the bomber flight's going to a garrison, but we might need that garrison. And I'm being forced into fights that I don't really want to have here. Okay, 
can I get this heavy? Will he still be in the set? He probably won't. Oh, go on. Okay, good. We have been able to do it. Let's try and boom and zoom this A6M5. Successfully done. Can I defend the command center? Okay, class of it, you get a pass. here is I'm getting myself isolated again but there's there's juicy targets here there's the A6M the grand attacker that I can shoot it's a long way away that's the problem oh, the yak's gonna give me a world of pain isn't he attack before I go down. I'm probably not going to be able to do that. No. A6M5 is taking me out. Tough battle this. It's awkward. I haven't got support because I've only got a bomber as, um, on my team. So my bots aren't really congregating in the way that humans might would. And we've lost the airfield. Ah. Oh, sorry, class of it. Saw red and shot it. You were on such low health that by the time I realised it was you, you were dead. No harm done, at least in the sense that you've been killed with the scepter still intact, but I apologise. That was um, dopey of me. does help. Going to gamble that I can get this guy. Good gamble. I've got something on my tail and uh, we're still nowhere near taking this. Crack! It was the yak. Okay, well, I saved the bomber. He's taken the sector. I think it's too late. That was a really difficult battle because I didn't have the grouping that I needed with my team. They were splitting everywhere. The bots, of course, they're all programmed individually. I don't think there's any chance that they pro they're programmed to act together. Uh, and it meant that I was always fighting more or less isolated. I have managed to set up um, the capture of this, but I think it's probably too late. And that was a really tricky battle for this aircraft. Um, I could have done with at least one supporting human. I would have probably stuck to them like glue and we would have been much more successful. Uh, we're not going to win this. We're too far behind, I think. Unless we happen to shoot down all of their aircraft. We'll come back and see about that. We need to move on. And get into the Tier 7. Oh, was it after the scoreline as well? 
Well, it is going to happen, I guess. I mean, I didn't see your name pop up until I was already shooting at you, and by the time I stopped shooting, I'd already done so much damage, you you were dead. Um, I think you're still going to win the game, so that's a good thing. And also, it didn't ha happen to help flip the scepter. Okay, so the tier 7, the Dora, and mm, tier for tier, probably not quite as good as the tier 6. Nonetheless, a good aircraft. The gun armament has stepped up considerably again. We'll look at that in a moment. Not so good at ground attacking this one. You're more looking for aerial dominance than ground attacking on this one. So ability a little bit up. Airspeed up again as well. Maneuverability actually slightly a bit better on this case. That may be because of the build, but look at that in a moment. Okay, let me know how it goes, Clasovitz, whether we win or not. I don't think we will. We were too far behind. And... Uh, Altitude performance increases a bit as well. So let's go and see what the door is all about. Make sure I've got the right one selected. Thinner aircraft, there we go, gun armament. This time we've got 230 millimeters, 1890, so we've lost a little bit of range, but not much. 220 millimeters, 2559, so the range has gone up a bit. And 213 millimeters at 1640, and a whopping 650 cumulative damage this time. Bombs and rockets. We've only got one 250 kilogram bomb. Well, in some ways that makes your decision simpler because you've got less ordnance to play with, but these rockets really aren't going to do very much. Probably try and use them on all of it uh, uh, on a secondary object rather than the gun emplacement. Uh, and you should be able to get that secondary object, particularly at a mining plant, for instance. Let's go and see how we've built this. Again, there's quite a lot to be done here. I won't do that now, but you can see I can take these up quite high. so. We can get more speed out of this aircraft by some uh, quite considerable amount, I would say. But let's just go into, for instance, uh, enhance that very quickly. I've probably got the materials to do it currently. Okay, you can see the speed rating went up to 57. We'll just do it again very quickly. That didn't actually go at this time. We'll try and get the weapons to cluster a bit cl more closely. Okay. And you've probably, as you've probably heard, yeah, that was a close battle. But, um, and again, we've gone for the, uh, this time we've gone for bolt carriers. Uh, no, bolt carriers, previous uh, um uh, choice as well and that's to increase the burst length so we can do more boom and zoom with that 650 dps i won't bother enhancing that at the moment um, but you can see the way that i've been building these focal walls it's pretty much the same all the way through again horizontal gun gun platform if we just look at the airspeed maximum dive speed is 547 mm -hmm. not great and the climb is 343 definitely not great so straight and level horizontal boom and zoom more emphasis on boom and zoom than ground attacking uh, slightly than the preceding aircraft, the tier six, which I think is actually the pick of the bunch, but this one's pretty good. Now let's hope for some more humans uh, so I can fight as part of the group. Okay, so I've just caught a comment from Cleeks. I would focus on the speed and guns of the Focke Wolf 190s. Yes, unequivocally, yes. He and I are in complete agreement. I think you're all, um, a waste of time trying to improve the maneuverability. You can't get it up to a competitive level. Yeah, I think I've got about what probably 11,000 personal points in what was a very awkward battle for me. As you heard, Klasovic, you had possibly the same problem. I can't actually remember who you had as your teammate, but with a bot, only a bomber for company, I couldn't rely on the bots to cover me. And you definitely need covering in the Focke Wolves. As I say, it's a group attack aircraft par excellence. Get isolated and you're very vulnerable. And I had to keep getting myself isolated to give ourselves a chance of taking sectors there. So if we're bottom tier, which we are, we don't want anything to do with the airfield probably, unless it's about to fall and I can go in and grab it. This is going to be a garrison tour. Oh, pardon me. We'll let the Spitfires battle it out for the middle. I'm going to see if I can find, not particularly the B-32, but the ground attacker. 
And the P51 can outmaneuver me as well, so I'm going to have to. Don't really want to tangle with that if I can avoid it. And what have we got? Rocket Warp 190D as well. Well, I'll, I'll take my chances against that. Let's go and do the first bit. Unfortunately, no really major secondary targets here, so I'm going to just have to pop the bomb on a, the warehousing complex and then I hope I can do something with the rockets against a, an already damaged target. Okay, so what we can actually do now is use the rockets... Oh my goodness, really? I've hardly done any damage to that at all, according to that. Okay, now we've got it. And there we go, that's just about perfect. And then we've got the airfield which that's good news as well. Now I'm going to just try and clear out heavies for the bombers. I'll gain altitude. Try and preserve a bit of boost. Oh, I think I saw an enemy bomber coming in there. But worse than that, it's a multi-roll. wonder what it is. It's a BVP. That's not good news. Right, let's get these heavies out as quick as possible. Let's hope the BVP leaves me alone. Got my wish. Very compliant BVP. Yeah, okay, so as you've seen already, don't want to be in front of this if you can avoid it, particularly if you're a tier 7. really sure I'd call the tier 10 back wing. We'll come to it, I'll discuss it then, but I, I would actually regard it more as a shooter heavy than a shooter, shooter multi-roll. It doesn't have enough ground attacking capability for a multi-roll. Okay. So the question is, where do I want to go? That's where my team is. So that's the one I want to get to, but... Uh, Gonna have to face up to the oh, it's the BVP. Let's hope I don't get into a turn fight with it. Go to the airfield. Oh, it's turning right down. Boost, try and get away. Probably won't. I could do with some help here, guys. Right, I heard my first set of rockets coming in from the BBP. Which has been shot down. I did ask for help and I got it. Brilliant. Oh, I do fancy contest... Ooh, really? You want to have a look at my undercarriage, do you? That sounds all sorts of wrong, doesn't it? Let's just put a little bit more distance between me and him. I'll help you. Yeah, you can go after that. Wow, the enemy is um, discombobulated and separated and nowhere to be seen. Let's go pick off repairs then. Okay, so it's one of those battles. Turns out my team is vastly superior to the enemy. I mean, I've not done anything wrong, but I just haven't had anything to do particularly. You've seen a little bit of the ground attacking capability. You've seen the guns in operation. Um, ooh, I was hoping to pick up repairs there. But truthfully, this team's been so dominant, I don't suppose anybody's done a great deal. Well, actually, the F7F has done a fair amount. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Bot decided he'd move as soon as I fired. Not surprising. Reads my input. Okay, so highly dominant team this time. So dominant that uh, I didn't get to do a great deal. But you did actually get to see how destructive the guns are. You saw a little bit of the ground attacking capability. Um, and provided you, again, you stay as part of a group, you can do very well in that aircraft. It's a pretty good plane. So, so far I'd say, I don't really want to try and rate the, the, the low tiers. Let's start at tier five. Tier five, mediocre. Tier six, really good. Tier seven, pretty damn good. And what we'll move into now is the first tier eight, and we're gonna play the two tier eights turnabout. As I say, we'll come back to this particular Focker Wolf, which is the um, premium tier seven at the end of the stream if I can. Um, but just in case, I'll say right now, it's underpowered. It's got a tier six engine for a tier seven uh, plane, but the armament is still quite decent. So it's an old school premium. It's actually inferior to its tech tree counterpart. That's the way it should be. It's a premium aircraft. You don't buy them in theory to be more powerful than your opposing players. Well, that philosophy seems to have gone out of the window with Wargaming, doesn't it? So we'll stick with the multi-rolls to begin with. Just select the D. But to be truthful, there's now a dramatic change. We go to the back wings, okay? And these, uh, this tier eight is not a ground attacker at all. It does have rockets, but they're air-to-air -air rockets. This is all about getting Golobevs, okay? And the garment has dropped off considerably, but you're in a considerably different role um, because you're basically a fighter. You're not an, uh, uh, a multi-role anymore. And you can see that in compensation, the maneuverability has gone up hugely. Completely different to playing philosophy. And those, uh, I think they're 23 millimeters, we'll soon find out. The gun armament is extremely serviceable. Bombs and rockets, the rockets are entirely for air-to-air -air attack. You can use them on ground targets, but you'd only do so in very specific situations where you wanted to take out the final bit of a, a ground target in order to flip a base. Airspeed, a little bit higher. Maneuverability massively higher. Altitude performance a lot greater. Let's go and take a look at that gun armament. 220 millimeters, 2,559 range, a couple of 13 millimeters, 1,640 range, and then a couple of 30. Oh, sorry, we're still looking at the focal. Just realized as soon as I saw the 30 millimeters. Let's do that again, shall we? Tier 8, BBP. Didn't think that sounded right. So we've just got the 220 millimeters and it's 2,625 range. Now that may seem quite a downgrade on the previous aircraft, well it is, but these are still very serviceable, high damaging guns uh, for a fighter. You probably won't uh, um, be upset with them. Bombs and rockets, these are exclusively air to air. Bank 03 memory, thank you for your follow. Welcome to the community. I say exclusively, they're intended for air to air combat. Uh, You'll only be using them against ground targets, rarely. Uh, and they don't do a particularly a good job of attacking ground targets. But if you want Golubov medals, this is an excellent aircraft for them. We'll just drop down to how I've got the aircraft set up. Um, set up. Well, I've designed this as a fighter, lightweight wing frame, lightweight power unit. Because I have the slot, I then put the ultimate uprated rated engine in. Pilot has the familiar aerodynamics first, aerobatics, and then we start working on Marksman 1 and Marksman 2. But because of the air-to-air -air rockets, I actually have got a rocketeer skill on this. We just take a quick look at the outboard weapon. I can't remember what I've done. I've put the ultimate strength and hard points on. I want the rockets to come back quicker and quicker and quicker. I mean, I have been known to get two, the equivalent of two, the best part of three Golobevs in one game in this, um, with that kind of setup. So. This is a fighter. Let's get into battle. And what we'll do afterwards is we'll do, do the, the so-called real fighter afterwards, the TA-152, which is also a completely different beast, but a little bit closer to, in concept, to the, the Fokker Wolves, um, but still flowing quite differently. Okay. Oh, and incidentally, I didn't say it. This is one of my favorite aircraft in the game. I really enjoy this. This is one where I'm sort of wondering and worrying what I'm going to play next. There's a fair chance I'll end up playing this BVP. And the tier nine, 
would be the same. In fact, I'd actually probably say the tier nine is slightly better tier for tier than this one. Sadly, that gets into games with things like EF131s, so not quite such a favorite anymore. Okay, slightly long queue. Let's go and see what we've got for a map and an order of battle. Okay, guys, I'm going to the garrison. Pick a garrison, any garrison. I'm top tier. I've got a Grand Attacker and a P82B, very good twin Mustang, and a Spitfire uh, and another Grand Attacker of, uh, as my tier seven companions. They have an ME329 at 1056. They have an unspecialized BVP-210. I should be able to be competitive against that. They've got two more Grand Attackers. Ooh. Well, this isn't the best of maps for Grand Attacking, to be fair, so that might work to our advantage. I'm going to go to the right-hand garrison first, then I'll probably try and go to the uh, uh, middle one. The cannons do need a little bit of management, provided you give them that management, they're re really more than serviceable. And now you can see we are talking about a manoeuvrable fighter as opposed to the Fokker Wolves. So the overheat is there, but it's serviceable, more than serviceable. I, I don't find it a bother. And you can see I've stripped down an air defense heavy in very quick order there. Okay, let's go and contest the center as I said I would. Probably try and take it. Oh, and that's a nuisance. Ooh. I didn't realise he'd turned. It's not a bother. In straightening him up, I've made him easy prey for my team. I should have rocketed him, actually. Goodbye. Rocket kill number one. Really good players can actually use these rockets slightly with the machine guns and do deflection shots with them. I tend not to do that because it needs practice and I don't put in the necessary practice. Well, all their bases are under threat. We should be able to capture these. This one somehow this has gone back to fully defended. Uh, give me some help, guys. Oh, I've got no help. This is going to be tricky. Oh, he's made a mistake. Unfortunately, that wasn't the critical I wanted. I got his engine. I wanted his wing. Didn't get his wing again. I'm only going to get so more ch many more chances at this. No, I'm not. Uh, oh, wow, really? I thought we were about to capture all three of their sectors. Instead, we've lost one of ours. We have managed to capture one of them. The middles thinned out appallingly quickly. It looked to me as if we were going to easily take that. And uh, we got nowhere near. Um, well, I'm going to try and assault the middle and then try and fan out and perhaps take that one. I suspect we're going to take the middle anyway now. 
I spent too long fighting that bot, I should have just flown away from him. I felt like I could actually outturn him. A couple of times I almost did as well. No Golobev this time, Ren. one of these battles where um right let's fly away from the Spitfire and come back and kill it oh wow my team is not defending my team is not capturing I'm actually surprised we're losing this so badly Now's the time to go and take this um, garrison. Let's see if we can turn this battle around. Should have rockets again in about 19 seconds. Let's go and try and get this air defense aircraft off the uh, ground attacker. Jolly good. Oh, we've lost another sector though. We're not able to take and hold. That's uh, irritating. Right, come on guys, let's get this centre under control. Good. Oh, didn't mean to fire those rockets. That's really a frustrating. I'm going to reload them. Oh, gosh. Fast as we capture sectors, they take them back. Come on. I'm going to have to now start knocking them down, taking them out of the game. Do some damage to him, KI 3. That's good. Okay, oh, I thought that was my going to be my kill. Never mind. Well, that'd be a good aircraft to get out. Very low health as well. Good. Come on, rockets now, please. That's the bot. That's the bot that won't die. Oh, really? Two of them? Okay, let's refocus the original one. No, that's bad shooting. Missed the sight line. That bot just did not want to die. This is a really good battle. It's competitive. We should have the advantage now because we've got more aircraft, but that's not given a given. Have they got any humans left? They've still got their heavy. And a BBP, okay. Don't know where the BBP is. Let's go and try and get rid of this. OK. 
Okay, well, we have probably now got uh, the advantage. Not going to mess around. There you go. All three of them. Oh, gosh, he actually managed to get my... That Spitfire has been a blasted nuisance all game long. Okay, I did a lot of damage to the heavy, so he's now down. Okay, I think we're going to win. Oh, it was the BVP. He had rockets, of course, because I used them all on the heavy. And you saw I needed to use them all as well. He didn't actually die. He was just terribly low on health after that and couldn't do anything. So it was a good trade. Okay, not too bad. You got to see the rockets in action. Got to see some uh, the gun that the guns are certainly manageable. I think they're more than manageable. I think they're pretty good guns actually. They don't sound like they would be just a pair of twenty millimeters, but I think they are. And that's a really good uh, uh, aircraft. I think I thoroughly recommend you get hold of that one. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll swap across to an aircraft I don't like as much, the TA one five two. And unfortunately, back in December two thousand and eighteen, this aircraft got a really nasty little nerf. Um, it's more inaccurate when you're firing at fighters, which I... Th the only reason I can think of for doing that, it was a powerful aircraft to be fair. Uh, maybe it needed a bit of a nerf, too much in my opinion. I'm not going to compare the TA-152 to the, the BVP-210, I'm going to compare it to the, um, the Tier 7 Dora. Okay, because these two aircraft here are completely different in, in uh, playstyle, so let's just look and see roughly what we've got. Well, in theory, the gun armament's a little bit less, but the gun armament is very, very different, as we'll discuss in a moment. You're not going to do any ground attacking in this, generally. Uh, survivability is a bit higher. Airspeed, bit, quite a bit higher. Maneuverability, quite a bit higher, but still pretty poor. Altitude performance, very, very good. And there's a reason for this. This is a high-altitude interceptor. So let's click to it and see what we've actually got. We've got three... MK-103 cannons, and I want you to notice they fire slowly, but at great distance this is a sniper. Not like the Fokker Wolves at all, even though you can see the family resemblance. Longer wings, longer fuselage for high altitude performance. Now, this used to snipe with the best of them, but unfortunately, as I say, it's been nerfed, and if you're firing at fighters, you're going to miss a lot. And that's awkward. That's really awkward. So you need to try and factor in on heavies, um, bombers, try and keep yourself at distance and snipe them out of the sky, try not to get into engagements with fighters uh, because you'll just be shooting and missing all the time. Okay, the manoeuvrability is not great, You're not a dogfighter. Okay, so I haven't actually pushed the equipment up any of the levels here, but you'll see here I immediately I've put the aerodynamics expert on and then I've put on marksman one and two. You need to do everything you can to get this uh, gun as accurate as possible so you can hit us hit at uh, the maximum distance and then if we just go and look at the servicing gun sight same reasoning polish skin to make it faster then i put on the uh, high speed gas turbine so i can go faster under boost because i'll maybe running away from things and that's my best uh, escape route as far as i'm concerned we'll look at the dive speed and the climb speed in a moment lightweight power unit because i can that needs changing that should be an uprated engine in my opinion We'll leave it B for the moment, and then on the guns, improved gas operated action for faster firing. Strong argument to put on the um, lo uh, long gun barrels here for a greater range of firing, um, and another day I might do that. Standard set of consumables. Okay. Have I got an uprated engine in stock that's better than that? No, I haven't. Loss of manoeuvrability, a little bit of airspeed. I won't do it, uh, but uh, probably if I was building this aircraft from scratch, that is what I would do. Okay, let's go and see what sniping we can do with this. And it's the only sniper in the tech tree. The TA-183 is actually very short range weaponry. That that's the tier nine that follows it. Uh, devastating weaponry, but short range. Good morning, Pete. So we're making good progress here. The battles have been competitive. They've been enjoyable. 
uh, but they've not been too long. So I'm reasonably certain I'm going to be at this stage. I think I'll be able to squeeze in the um, uh, the the A8, and then actually I'm going to have to download both of these streams and stitch them together to make one uh, video for world of, uh, for YouTube. Given the intervention of Cindy the cat. Thank you so much for that, Cindy. Really enjoyed you switching off my computer in the middle of my stream. I'm top tier. We've got an AL20, got an LA11, BF109G and Yak3RD, who Yari's favourite, Eagle. They've got an ME329, Spitfire, Whitblit, Wits, Whitblitz. Well, okay, I need to watch out for that. I'm on the wrong side of the map. Look at me, I'm over the mining plant side and I've got no ordnance. They've got another Spitfire, an F7F, and a KI-84, so they've got lots of turn fighters. This is actually hard to know where to go. I am going to have to stay as part of my team, but I'm actually fairly useless at the plant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly to the side of the plant, that's so I don't actually get caught by the AA with luck, and then try and get myself about here in case any bot bombers come across. Uh, excuse me, why are you firing at me? Don't do that again, mate. Seriously, don't do that again. I'm going to ignore him for the moment, but uh, he's already made me fly off track, which is irritating. Let's go and see if we can do something about this F7F. Normally it takes me quite a while to get into um, the right lead for this aircraft. Not too bad. So no bot bombers came over here. Oh, beg your pardon. No bot bombers came up here. And the reason why that happened, I missed both my first two shots. Accuracy is key on this aircraft. It looks like the bot bombers went across to their, their plant. That's where I'll go next. So had I landed my first, either, probably even just one of my first two shots of that J7W3, I would have killed it. Because I missed two and only hit it with my third volley, I was a dead duck. I might have been better just flying over the top of it and then coming around behind it. I was a bit greedy there. And I'm not sure I even want to bother with this multi-roll. I want to try and get to the plant if I can, shoot down the bombers. I'm probably going to shoot down the bombers anyway, even if they take the plant. They'll probably come to the command centre now. Don't want to go at them too fast, I'm quite happy to keep them at 3,000 feet. After all, if I can shoot them at that distance, why would I want to give them a chance to shoot me back? I haven't quite got the lead right on this aircraft yet. And this is an aircraft which you probably want to play three or four times in a row. Much preferred him not to be coming at me, to be fair. Okay. Bombers, meet and drink to the TA-152, if you're top tier for sure. And I'll probably go and try and take out the bomber flight, actually. Well, no, that's a more interesting target. Was that me? That may actually burn out. No, I don't want to give it any chance of getting to the...
Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I've just seen what's happening. We've lost our plant. We haven't taken their plant. And we've lost the middle. And we've lost the command centre we took at the start of the game. Well, in that case, I am going to have to defend this command centre. I'm not actually going to put the engine back in at the moment. I don't actually need it repaired. I can just wait for the bomber to come to me. These uh, command centers too. Oh, we've lost another command center. Uh, I'm in a cleft stick here. I need to attack, but I need to defend. is looking like a hopeless loss. We've lost this uh, lost this command centre as well. Okay, not enough lead. using sniper mode, not realising he's right on me, he's rammed me, I've got very little health anyway so I really could have done without that. And now I'm in a position where I'm fighting the sorts of aircraft I don't want to be fighting. And I'm going to have to run because that's the Spitfire behind me. I did my job. I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with what I did. I mean, he's got a fairly good score as well. The Yak 3 rd and the bbf one rg Well, they're down tiered. I suppose that was difficult for them. Uh, just couldn't concentrate our forces uh, accurately enough. Yeah, it's one of those where um, we got on the wrong side of being 3-2 down. That middle period of the battle was awkward as well. And the problem with the TA-152 is it's not really an offensive aircraft unless you can get it over a plant, which I never did, and shoot down enemy bombers, which I never did. Uh, and then I was suck forced into defending, which I did more or less successfully. Uh, I lost the command centre, but I delayed its capture for a very long time, but difficult. What you did get to see is how good those guns are against bombers. You also got to see how difficult it was to hit anything that wasn't f at long distance and was uh, manoeuvring. Uh, the TA-152, a pale shadow of what it used to be. And I can tell you before to December 2018, that would have massacred light fighters at 3,000 feet and that made it a completely different aircraft. Now, you can hardly hit them. That's very kind of Mr. Whip -bit Blitz. Unfortunately, I can't reply to him because somehow, and I'm, li I'm literally completely clueless as to how I've been chat banned. That comes off tomorrow. I've really no idea. I've probably used chat three times since uh, the chat ban came in on Friday. I've probably used uh, the chat three times in the week before that, mainly to say politely to people, look, you're doing the wrong thing. You ought to be doing this or you should have done that. And apparently that must be harassment because I've got banned. So I'm not going to use chat anymore. It's a shame, really. Okay, so what we do now is we go up to the tier 9 and the tier 9 um, BBP 
Let's see how it stacks up against its tier 8 counterpart. Gun armament, significant improvement. Do you know I didn't realise that? I'm going to have a close look at that. Probably 23mm, that's why. Bombs and rockets. Again, these are air-to-air -air rockets, so you're not doing much ground attacking, if any, at all in this. Survivability is a little bit better, as you would expect. SP is a fair bit better, considering I've probably built this the same way as the BVP at tier 8. Maneuverability is slightly down, however. Not to atrocious, well, it's a minimal, really. And altitude performance is a bit better. So let's go and look at that gun armament. It's still, t uh, that's the tier 8. Keep doing that. Here's the tier 9. Now, it's still 20 millimeters, but the reason why it's better is because there are now three of them. And 2625 feet again. Bombs and rockets, pretty much the same deal. Three volleys, uh, for, and again, this is a great aircraft for Golubevs. We look at the pilot skills, unsurprisingly, pretty much the same sort of sets of skills. The aerodynamics expert, Marksman 1, no engine guru 2 this morning uh, yet. I've put on resilience, which uh, is that resilience? It is resilience, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, well, when you're critically damaged, that's a really good skill to have. That's an interesting choice, actually. Pity it's a three point skill and aerobatics aer expert again for extra maneuverability. How have I built this? Well, again, it's all about maneuverability and I've put on an rated engine because I have a slot for it. Outboard weapon, again, we want them to reload as quickly as possible. And actually, let's just quickly look at the reload. 52 seconds, which is pretty decent and I can do more. That's not calibrated yet. So, this is actually, I think, a better aircraft than the Tier 8, but unfortunately it's facing Tier 10 bombers quite a bit of the time. So, without further ado, let's get into the BVP-212. Naloth. Nilo? Nilo, I'll settle on for the moment. I hope I haven't mispronounced that. Thank you for your follow. Welcome to the community. Brother from another mother. That's what I've got, actually. Actually, no, I haven't. I've got a brother from another father, but that doesn't work so well. <laughs> yeah, that's my problem, yeah. Telling people they're wrong over the internet. When will I learn? <laughs> been doing it since 1992. Why have I been banned from everywhere? <laughs> uh, it was, but e even before December 2018, when version 2 of the game was in, Pete, um, the TA-152 was a monster. If you come across Eek any time, ask him about how he feels about what they've done to his beloved TA-152. And while we're here, we ought to be doing some shout outs. So people who um, joined the stream early, maybe asleep now, maybe not. Big Buck currently isn't streaming, only streams uh, um, occasionally. It's quality over quantity with him, but he's actually on an interstate move in the United States at the moment, so it's not streaming as far as I know. Awesome Pete, however, is um, awesomely present most days of the week. Awesomely playing World War Plays, you ought to be following him. I strongly recommend that. And we do also have, I'm not gonna call him a new streamer anymore. Teddy Dante, who's clearly putting a lot of effort into the game, and I invite you to go and enjoy his uh, journey through it. Now, if I've missed anybody, don't be frightened of saying I'm a streamer as well. I'm more than happy to give you a shout out. It's just that uh, the user list in Twitch is broken at the moment. I've got a whole load of people in there who I know aren't on the stream. They were there before I even started streaming, so it's actually quite difficult to pick out everybody. Okay. Do you know what? I didn't actually even check the order of battle. Let's do that now, shall we? Well, actually, let's get out of here before I get shot by something from the ground. So we've got a ground attacker wandering into the middle. Okay, this is not what I would have expected a ground attacker to be, do to be doing when there's a plant and a mining pl uh, military base to take. Um, never mind. He's going to fly into the... He's not going to fly into the, ground, uh, the the cliff. Okay, we've got a mining plant. There's not much more. I can still nothing I can do more at the... Uh, 
military base let's go and take on this gaggle of aircraft that's flying out of their military base they're going for the heavies I'm hoping I'm going to catch them mm. when I turn I won't be going for this one I'll be looking behind me there's a specialised something behind me it's a specialised Spitfire he saw that coming didn't he I think I can get him because he's I can Oh, that was a BBP 212 as well. <laughs> I was lucky to get away with that. Right, I don't actually see any air defence aircraft. Oh, they are. There. Oh, we haven't got our military base. Oh, what the hell are they doing? Okay, I need to take the help take this one then. Thank you so much for that. Optin Optinova, good name. Thank you for the joining the community, Optinova. Welcome, welcome. Oh, fudge. Tarantre, also welcome, welcome. So I'm a bit busy at the moment, but uh, very nice to have you uh, along, both of you. Oh, don't fire AA at me when I'm trying to kill something. I've got to get out of here. The AA will have me and then we'll reverse progress. Oh, we didn't take our military base. That's appalling. How on earth did we not take our military base? Oh, this is turning incredibly pear-shaped, isn't it? We've started off well, but we've failed to take our military base. Oh, I was hoping I wouldn't catch the trees there. Oh, it's too far away. You saw the rockets explode behind him. How on earth did we not take that? Wow. Well, it's inevitable that we'll lose our, mil our mining plant now because they've got two military bases fl attacking it. I don't understand that. And there's nothing I can do there either because um, oh, I might be able to shoot down the bomber over our plant. That might just save it for a little while longer. It's too late. It's too late. We're not going to be able to do that. Finally, we take the military base. Oh, I really can't believe we didn't take that. And on this map, it's a, a sign of an incredibly weak team if you lose your local military base. I'm going down for the ground attacker. And the consequence of that is because we actually lost both military bases, the enemy now has both plants. And I just can't see a way back from here. They're bound to get a count of at least one of them, if not both. And it will not help if I miss with the majority of my rockets. It'd actually be better off being just left alone here, but... Well, this has certainly been the worst quality battle for me this stream. Sadly, this team has been completely outplayed. Do you know what? I should have stayed at the military base. And, and with hindsight, I should have worked out what on earth was going on. 
and help to prevent it from falling into the enemy hands. I'm shocked. I'm still shocked that we didn't take it. We had a bomber over it. engine. Looks like it was. Pretty good flying, Trum. Quite impressed with what you did there. Try to use the cover to your advantage given that you'd lost your engine. That was good. It's all too late. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Well, I made a bad mistake. I assumed that we had that under control. And when I look back, it had fallen to the enemy. I'm actually really surprised. And that's one of those occasions when the right thing to have done would have been to wait and wait and wait, uh, and then uh, pick off the enemy aircraft as they came in, all the air defense aircraft when they spawned. I made a bad tactical error there. Having shot down the two heavies at that uh, sector, um, I assumed we had it. And we didn't, and that was the undoing of our team. Well played the enemy. Sneaked one up our trouser leg there. Okay, so you got to see that uh, the way I played the tier 9 isn't very different to the way I played the tier 8. And uh, I'll have to pay more attention there. And it is one of those the games, isn't it? Look at this. We've got 13,000 and 10,000 and 7,000 there. Look at the enemy team. Look at that. None of them have performed particularly well, and yet they've won. Probably because the RB-17 was left alone to bomb and bomb and bomb and bomb. A bot bomber. One of those. It's one of those where you just go, how did they win that? So let's look at the TA-183. We will compare it to the TA-152, but really there isn't much of a comparison. The The fighting style of the aircraft is completely different. So when you see that the gun armament is 13 better, that doesn't actually mean anything because it's a completely different style of play. Um, it is better, it's powerful armament, but it's not long, long range, it's not a sniper. Okay, airspeed is a lot higher, maneuverability is lower. Here's a clue. Altitude performance is a little bit better. This is an up and down fighter. Uh, the, the TA-183 and it's handicapped by having pretty short range weaponry of only 2,000 feet. That's that's a nuisance. Um, it does a lot of damage. 849, that's probably 850 I would have thought. I'm not sure why it comes out as 849 there. But you've got to be up close and the problem with it is if you're up close to anything that can manoeuvre you're not going to get it down quickly enough before it can get on your tail and shoot you down because your manoeuvrability is pants. Okay, 53 only. So you won't be surprised to learn that I've tried to build this A for a speed, aerodynamics expert, engine guru one, also a bit of accuracy, we've got one extra point, uh, probably stick that on to, um, well, there's a good question actually, what would I choose out of the two point skills? Possibly put it on battle tested rather than um, um, aerobatics expert, mainly to try and prevent the player getting injured by bombers that I'm attacking. Anyway. We're not going to be doing that today because we won't get the extra point. And then the build there is a polished skin, uh, the high speed gas turbine for boost under acceleration, upgraded engine, uh, improved gas operated action. I like to get my shots out quickly. Again, there's an argument with this kind of range, you might want to put on the long gun barrels and try and increase the range. That wouldn't be a bad argument, but it doesn't work for me because I like, I tend to bracket and I may miss with two volleys and then the third volley goes in. That's the way I play. Somebody who's confident about their lead probably recommend the long gun barrels instead of the uh, gas operated action here. And of course the gun sight. Okay, TA-152, don't turn fight, keep high, go up and down. Hello Shader. if you'd consider going and looking at Shader's streams. Um, 
Also another World of War Planes player. Oh, De Nova. Just one of those games. One of those games where you go, yeah, we're killing all of the enemy, we're doing all the work necessary, and we're losing. To be fair, I actually didn't play well. Um, I was fighting in the wrong sorts of places at the wrong sorts of times. Okay, so here we go. TA183, we've got Cloudy Dante, who's um, on my stream. Uh, I'll promise not to shoot you down, Cloudy. Uh, EF131. Uh, okay. They've got an F-84F. That's really good for ground attacking, but not so good at fighting aircraft. And two Yak-19s. Well, two Yak-19s? I think this is somewhere to avoid. What I'm going to try and do is do a little bit of help at this garrison, but fly straight through it and try and stop what I hope will be their bot bombers over their plant. waste any more time here. I've done what I think is necessary. That's one of the heavies out. I'll leave it to the rest of the team because that's what I want to try and kill. In fact, those are what I want to try and kill. I know he's out of the sector. Deal with that in a moment. I can't take my eye off what I'm doing just now. Oh, I've been. I got distracted and let my weaponry overheat. That's fatal with this. Good. I've got the bomber anyway. I do apologise for missing them. Um, whatever that was. I really couldn't take my eyes off the screen at the moment and I didn't have orbs in the foreground. I'll fix that now. It hasn't notified me in chat either, so... Whoever that was and whatever you did, thank you so much for it. Okay, so ground attackers perhaps? Yep, there's one down there. Let's go for that. Oh, we've got the plant. Okay. Well, my intervention has certainly contributed to the capture of the enemy plant. And by that I mean the one closest to the enemy's garrison, so... I'm happy. Ooh, that's not good. He's on fire. Burnout, please. Thank you. afford to overheat the weaponry there because I've got plenty of cooldown time on the turn. Okay. I'd rather gain altitude and go for the heavy. The heavy's actually flying away. Gosh! The enemy is not making much of an effort to get this uh, plant back. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to see bombers. And I think they're actually heading over to the fire plants. Right, so off we go. We may as well try and establish supremacy while we're at it. Oh, it's a good question. I don't actually know that these are the same guns as the ME262. That's actually worth checking, isn't it? That's what I want. Oh, there is a bomber coming now. No bother taking out bombers. 
I mean, basically, we're fucked. We're talking about pseudo heavy here. Wow, quick game. Okay, so that was actually another bad game, but this time in the opposite direction. Uh, but you got to see certainly a very important aspect of the TA-183's uh, gameplay, and that is basically get those bombers and get those heavies. Contest uh, um, air sectors where the bombers and the heavies will be going. Um, but uh, our team was so dominant there that, that A, it was very easy, and B, none of us probably got to do very much. Just the way it goes. Take the wins, because you'll certainly get plenty of defeats that way, as we've just seen in the game proceeding. Okay, so we're up to tier 10. And we're up to the BVP 2 on 5. So we'll just select the BVP. Ooh, that's nice, 4 token mission completed. How did Cloudy do? Top, top of the tree, top of the tree. No, decent, that's pretty good. So, is it more of the same with the tier 10 BVP 2 on 5 as it is with the preceding two tiers, the 8 and the 9? Answer, no. Look at the maneuverability figure, it crashes. This aircraft, however, is rugged and robust and has good guns. This is again to be flown as a pseudo heavy. I wouldn't call it a multi-role, um, but it's got more in common with the Fokker Wolf 190s than either the tier eight or the tier nine uh, because of the weaponry and because of the lack of maneuverability. Um, but I tend to regard it as a pocket heavy. I do actually have a YouTube channel video on this particular aircraft. And if you'd like to go and Seek that out. There's the YouTube channel. Yes, Dilly, you're shut out. That's because of the naughty Cindy and what she did earlier. Okay, so what we've got. Gun armament. Big increase over the tier 9. Bombs and rockets. Also a big increase because you've now got seven volleys of rockets. Again, still not really for use, use against ground targets, but don't overlook the opportunity if there's a sec so section of ground target you can finish off to flip a sector worth doing. Survivability much greater. Um, interestingly, this has 800 hit points, which is 100 hit points more than the XF-90 Heavy and 100 hit points more than the ME-262 HG-3. Yeah, you heard that right. This has actually got more hit points than two of the Tier 10 Heavies. Airspeed, a little bit down, probably because of the way I've built it. Maneuverability, massively down. To compensate for that, you do actually have a rear gunner. Can deter bots. Altitude performance 66, which is enough to be competitive with um, the, the kind of um, heavy style of fighting. Okay. Let's go and have a look at the aircraft. And as you can see, the two crew down there. Gun armament, four 20 millimeters now, 800 cumulative damage. That's very, very healthy. And I like the guns. They handle really well on all three of these backwing aircraft. Bombs and rockets, seven volleys. 56 in total, and you also have a limited amount of cap ground, ground attacking capability. You do have four of these WGR-210s, gun emplacement basically, or maybe finishing off a section of ground target. So don't ignore that, but it's not a good ground attacker. Certainly not a heavily armed one. Survivability is, uh, let's just have a look at that. So, the way I've built it, I've lost uh, 18 of the hit points, that's originally at 100, so it's pretty robust, certainly much more robust than the previous two back wings. Airspeed is okay, it's not fast, let me say that straight away. When we're talking about playing it as a heavy, you're talking about a slow heavy. That's a drawback. Maneuverability. You are not going into turn fights with this. This is even below the Fokker Wolves, the way I've built this. And altitude performance is very healthy, 66. Pilots. Well, we've gone for Engine Guru, Marksman 1, and then uh, Rocketeer to increase the accuracy of the rockets. I guess the next skill up would be the Aerodynamics Expert. There is an argument that you could have put that one on before these two, in my opinion. I'm quite comfortable with what I've done there. Just make sure I haven't got another free skill point. No, we're a fair way away. Uh, let's just actually assign that uh, and so we can get to see what's going on a bit better. Gunner. I haven't really thought about this, but that's the typical setup. Um, defensive. And fire to stop aircraft behind you, damage you, um, 
as much as they might do. You get a 30% reduction in damage, and then Precision Gunner can take out air, uh, vulnerable sections in the aircraft. Particularly helpful if they can shoot out bot engines, because generally bots will turn away if they lose their engine. Okay, I haven't uh, fully specified the equipment. So I've gone for a lightweight wing frame there, which is interesting. That's probably because I don't think you're ever going to get the speed up to a level where you could play it as a true heavy, so we might as well have the maneuverability. But again, maneuverability is pretty trash anyway, so polished skin is probably the better choice there. And if you're going to go polished skin, then I would take out the lightweight wing frame uh, power unit and put on the uh, gas inj the injection, the boost injection system. In fact, if I was building this aircraft from scratch, that's probably what I would do. I'd take these two off, put on polished skin, put on the boost injection system and the uprated engine. And here we go, improve strength and hard points just to get those um, rockets to reload a bit quicker. Our reload is currently 110 seconds. Definitely want to get that down. However, you have got seven volleys, so you've got plenty of rockets to play with. And you can see I've got lots of work to do with getting this up to ultimate level equipment and calibrated and whatnot. We won't do that on stream. Let's just go and see if we can get into a battle where this works. Now, because it's slow, again, although you're wanting to play it as a heavy, you also want to keep an eye on what your team is doing. You don't want to get isolated in this either. That's the same as the Fokker Wolves. Hello, Ezra Gurney. How are you? Yes, you do, Cleeks. In fact, I actually um, made a reference to um, your comment. That was in my mind as I was talking about the aircraft. So thank you for what you said earlier. Um, and uh, again, I could not dis uh, 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 I could not agree with you more uh, in your latest comment. Hello, Xander Holt again, Submarinu. I've seen you around on plenty of other uh, warplane streams. It's nice to see you here. I'm sure you've visited before, but uh, you've caught my eye, and so I shall wave at you. Okay, we're on top tier. <laughs> Psycho Killer. Reminds me of the old Talking Head song from 1978. Missing the P, of course. Right, we are going to go and try and contest the military base. Could be tricky, could be a bit worrisome, and I'm keeping a very careful eye on my team to make sure I've got plenty enough going here. Most of the team is going to the plan. What have I got with me? A heavy fighter? I'm not sure what the other one below me is. It's enough to keep me here. I would have preferred more of my team to come here. Let's see what we can do. Mm, not getting into the battle at the moment. going to run away from me, I think. I'm going to find that a little bit difficult without an engine. Oh, wow, that's gone badly. I was a bit worried about how few of my team came here. And I've killed him basically because I can. I need to wait for my team to re-engage. Longer burst length, incidentally. I forgot to mention that. So not only have you got uh, more guns compared to the tier 9, you've also got a longer burst length. Which is right, considering you've lost all that manoeuvrability. Goodness gracious, could you imagine what this aircraft would be like if it had the maneuverability of uh, the tier 8 and tier 9? <gasps> Heavens, it would be a monster. It would be an absolute monster. So it's a good job it hasn't. Drats. I mean, I can outmaneuver the heavy, but he's managed to catch me. Now I'm in trouble. I've got two on me. 
still we took the military base which is good so we've begun to claw our way back into the battle I need to defend the plant so that's what I'll do next and as you saw those guns are excellent really good yeah I don't think speed is ever going to be a feature of this aircraft in my personal opinion cleats that's why I haven't bothered and we've got the count that's good now we need to protect it But it's good that different opinions are available. I mean, it's certainly not cut and dried that you shouldn't build this entirely for speed. I just like the reload on the rockets to be quicker. Okay, so we protect the plant, that's good. Somebody should take the bomber and mark it up. I mean, I've already shot that down once, so. protected the plant we now need to protect the military base and this is a slow burning battle this now I'm not swinging back for the bomber everything's flying away from me you can bet your bottom dollar as soon as I engage one aircraft I'm gonna find the enemy turns and engages me good news and that's exactly what happened look at that aircraft that came nowhere near me the moment I went and engaged one that's when they turned to try and take me and now I'm dead came out of nowhere I hate that you just know it's going to happen but there's nothing you can do about it you have to engage if you're going to get anything done and the moment you do the game jumps on you they won't come anywhere near you until you engage. That annoys me. Because it's just not realistic behaviour. We need to protect the plant again. I'm not going to leave it to chance to that fighter to take out the T... TU-12, I want to make sure of it myself. There'll be a ground attacker coming in over here, or hereabouts anyway. And if I can line him up, this will be a, a moment to use rockets. Well, it looks like we will lose that plant, but uh, we've got the other one for the moment. Oh, they may have run out of ground targets. Military base can't flip it. And in that case, we're in happy days. Oh, easy battle in the end. Um... I played my part, got jumped a couple of times by the game, I knew it was coming, nothing I could do about it, but you got to see that that was extremely competitive with heavies and bombers, I took out TU-12 twice, lots of rockets which I didn't really get to use, only the one shot I think, and that was from behind on the bomber, um, but this is a good aircraft, but you do need to remember it is not a manoeuvrable fighter style aircraft, it's a heavy in disguise, and there's a big change between the tier 9 and the tier 10, don't get caught out by it. Okay, Shader, enjoy your panto. Uh, Submariner, yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> my cat switched off uh, my um, computer in the middle of uh, this stream. So 
for once I'm going to have to download them and stitch them together and edit them, which is not what I normally do. I normally just take them straight across from Twitch into uh, YouTube. It's much quicker. So be patient, but yes, this fly through will appear on YouTube in its entirety uh, in an edited form. That probably won't be today because of uh, uh, my cat. Thank you very much, Cindy. But yes, it will be up as soon as I can get the editing done and stick it up. The problem is it's going to be a very long video. It's the upload that's going to be the problem. The other possibility is I could pay a bit of money and use an online editor. Uh, Frixy. Anyway, I'll see about that. Maybe I can get a free trial if I can. I, it'd be much more effective if I can actually do the editing online instead of download, edit, upload, because the upload is going to take all night. Right, okay, so the last Tech Tree aircraft to fly is the FW252. We will be able to get in the premium Fokker Wolf, I'm pleased to say. Uh, let's just compare this 252 to its predecessor, the TA183. It is very similar. Um, interestingly, the armament is rated as a bit worse. Well, I'm not sure I agree with the rating there. We'll see why in a moment. Survivability a little bit higher. Airspeed, lots, lots higher. Very fast aircraft, the T for, uh, FW252. That's getting into heavy territory. Uh, Maneuverability, the same, the way I've built it. It's not maneuverable. This is an up and down altitude fighter, not a turn fighter. Altitude performance is slightly better. So let's go and have a chat about this um, armament. And it's got 2,300 feet. And I think 300 feet is actually quite a significant difference. Um, and I think this makes these 230 millimeters better than the TA183. Um, even if the cumulative damage hasn't improved enormously. In fact, I don't think it's improved at all. I'm not even sure it's an improvement. It's not, it's actually worse. But I think you're, these are much more reliable guns. So you lose some cumulative damage, but you get much more reliable guns that hit at further distance. I think this rating for me personally is wrong. It, they, these are better guns. That said, you've got to be able to hit with 30 millimeters. Air speed, very quick. Ought to be doing everything to improve that if you can. So aerody aerodynamics expert, uh, and then Marksman 1 and 2 I've gone for there. Okay, those aren't bad choices. I will definitely be getting Engine Guru 2 uh, 1 next though, that's for sure. Let's just make that point work whilst we're uh, waiting to get an another point. And then the equipment, it's all about speed. Gun sight, I'll enhance that actually. Okay, polished skin for speed, uprated engine. Mm, that's the wrong choice for me. That should be the boost injection system probably. Have I got one? Don't know why you'd be working on maneuverability for this. Okay, I don't actually have one that's, uh, well, I've got lots of them. Maneuverability goes down, doesn't matter. Airspeed goes up, rating, and I'm just going to enhance that. I am going to put that on. I'm not sure why I put the lightweight wing frame on that. Argument would be you get, because you can turn slightly better, you can stay on targets a little bit longer. Frankly, most of the targets you ought to be trying to take with these are bombers and heavies and ground attackers. So you should be able to stay on the tail anyway. And again, my argument, my personal preference is to pump out the shots quicker. Um, again, very strong argument for putting on long gun, long gun, uh, long gun barrels, in my opinion, and increase the range. Um, basically, that's going to come down to your preference. I would guess, for instance, somebody like uh, Cleeks um, would uh, uh, actually opt for the long range, uh, the long gun barrels, and that certainly wouldn't be a bad choice. Okay, so this is the last Tech Tree aircraft in the Tech Tree fly through. We will play one more aircraft afterwards. We've got the time. That will be the Tier Seven uh, Premium Fokker Wolf One Hundred and Ninety. Okay, let's see what we can do in this. It's been a good stream. Thoroughly enjoyed flying through these lines. It's made me think a bit. Probably going to make me revisit some of my decisions on some of the aircraft. And we had lots of people watching as well. Can't be better. G Man, sir, thank you very much for that follow. Oh my goodness. Okay. Eek, you've actually broken cover, which allows me to do this. I'm sure lots of you people know who Eekaboo is. 
Um, I strongly recommend you go and follow his personal channel. I imagine lots of you have seen him many times on World of Tanks streams. Works for Wargaming. Uh, and make sure that they're, I think it's Senior Video Content Producer Eek, whatever it is, you make sure that their videos are up to snuff and do you do an excellent job. Before Eek worked for um, Wargaming, he was a private streamer and streamed World of Warplanes and introduced me to the game. All my mistakes are my own. Everything that I do well is as the result of his patient tutelage. Okay, so we're top tier. Well, we would be. It's tier 10 aircraft. Okay, factious comment number one. We have an SU-10 with us. They've got an AL-40P, which is a shame, because I'd rather be up high shooting a bomber than down low shooting a ground attacker. They've got BVP-215. Oh, it's the same map as I had on the TA-183. They'll have bot bombers then. And I'm going to play this exactly the same way. I'm going to try and fly across the... Uh, garrison and get to this plant and try and stop their bot bombers, which I assume will be there. Got a good chance of dominating the middle as well if the Antonov knows what he's about. Specialised, so with a bit like he does. Let's get that altitude. <laughs> Thank you, Eek. Nice of you to say so, but no. I'm actually surprised I got any of those shots in. That was an awkward angle. Let's go and chase him down. Uh, I may not need to, actually. The other horn is below me. And uh, I'll deal with that in a second. I Oh, this is... Oh, for a second now, I thought that was a Spitfire. There we go. That's all I wanted to do. I hope I'm going to catch this. Mo Sim, thank you very much for your follow. Welcome to the community. Right, now, we've done it as much as we ought to here. We need to skedaddle to this plant if I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. It's already getting very late. They've got half of it already. Turn in, turn in, don't turn away. Turn in, turn in. Good boy. Good little bot. Not only did you turn in, you didn't shoot me too much. Kind of you to come. Thank you for chatting, uh, Mosim. And and everybody, I would like you to pass it along, but eek smells. Okay, we have to just check that there aren't any ground attackers down there. Oh, look at that. They were out of sight because I was too high. I better pull up. I don't want to do an impression of a lawn dart, although that's really reserved for the XF-90. Greedy, let the guns overheat, that's silly. Mm -hmm. No, bailing out. I can see a collision forthcoming. Really? Okay, let's go up for the bomber then. Stand it on its tailpipe. Oh, we'll go for this bomber so, because the climb angle's not quite so bad. I'm actually going to use my engine cooling here to get up as quickly as possible. Ooh, what's that? Shiny, shiny. Yeah, I want to be careful about that heavy. That's a javelin as well, isn't it? There's another heavy as well. Goodness gracious. Okay, this is becoming competitive suddenly. Bloop. 
thank you very much, ME262. Kind of you to be there at that moment. Oh dear, and I'm out of my altitude. Come on. Let's try and shake him off. That's the javelin, of course. Where'd he go? It wasn't the javelin, it was actually one of the bombers. Or did the javelin actually... In oh no, I've flown away from the javelin, that's what it is. That's fine. It was the javelin. Michael. And thank you so much for that. Pidsley for your follow as well, thank you very much. Welcome to the community. Okay, let's see if we can do something about this javelin. It's just out of range at the moment. Now we're getting there. 1,200 hit points on the javelin generally, so it takes a lot of effort to knock one down. Go for the bomber again. You can just feel my pilot being shot out in a moment. Oh, I may have got his gunner. Good. I haven't done too much of the up and down stuff, to be fair. But uh, that is what you would do with this aircraft. Keep it very, very fast. I want to go for. They're attacking that plant. That's probably what I should go for. I'll probably find more stuff that I can deal with there. Oh, F-94 is that? I need to be careful of that then. Oh, this is going to hurt. Oh, he didn't rocket me. Okay. Okay. Admittedly, I had an SU-110 taking the bombers, but you can see that uh, my strategy of interceding up here worked perfectly. We were able to take both plants and give ourselves a very solid platform for the win. And you saw that the FW-252 is extremely quick, and it still hits pretty hard, even if it's not as hard as the TA-183. Personally, I prefer the guns on this because they've got that greater range, and probably you should uh, um, consider getting uh, the um, long gun barrels on it. Worth experimenting with, I would suggest. Okay, right, so we've got uh, another aircraft to do for the uh, Tech Tree fly-through, but technically that was the Tech Tree fly-through. Um, what we're going to do now is go back to Tier 7 and fly a premium Fokker Wolf 190, because I missed it out, out in case I wouldn't have time. Uh, I do have time, so we'll go back to it. But I hope you've enjoyed uh, that fly-through and that you've learned something on the way, even if it is just, well, if that's how you're going to fly it, I'll make sure I fly it somehow some other way. Uh, let's put in the P1101 pilot on this. Now, let's just compare this to its uh, Tier 7 counterpart. That's the Fokker Wolf 190D, an aircraft I like quite a lot. And the gun armament is uh, relatively the same. Strangely, you've got uh, apparently worse bombs than rockets. I didn't know that. That's worth knowing. Survivability is slightly better on this aircraft. That's probably because of the way I built the F, the Fokker Wolf 190D. Probably not anything inherently uh, better on the uh, 190A8. Uh, airspeed is slower. It's got a tier 6 engine. It's slow. Maneuverability is the same. Altitude performance is considerably worse. So this is actually an old old school wargaming premium aircraft. It's not as good as its tech tree car counterpart. And that's the way. That's the way I I liked my premiums personally. I didn't want them to be better. I wanted them to give me credits and experience and whatnot. So what's this aircraft about? Here it is. Looks more like your typical uh, Fokker Wolf. Again, familiar thirties firing at eighteen hundred and ninety feet. Familiar twenties, two thousand three hundred and sixty-two feet. 13 millimeters at 1640 feet and cumulative damage of 658. Nothing wrong with the cumulative damage. Uh, 
And what we've got here is a pilot which I've put in, which has uh, aerodynamics to improve the speed of the aircraft. And it is going to be speed because I've built this for speed. Don't build these for maneuverability. Engine Guru 1. Marksman 1 to improve the accuracy. I've also got one of my favourite skills, resilience. But that's because it works really well on the MEP1101. So, of course, that's something I haven't mentioned. This is a crew trainer. I haven't uh, maxed out the equipment, but it is exactly as you would expect given how I use the other Focke Wolves. Gun sight, polished skin, uprated engine. You could have considered the boost injection system there, I guess. Um, and in my case, gas operated action, I like to pump out the shots quicker. Uh, I don't think there's such a strong argument for long gun barrels here. Um, maybe increasing the burst length as well. I haven't looked at the game 3D models, that's something I'll do some other time. But that's my preference, generally anyway. It's a fairly standard set of consumables. Okay, let's go and see what we can do in this tier 7 premium. Horizontal boom and zoomer. Just a bit underpowered, basically. Hey, so yeah, I agree with you there. The D does look sleek, but yes, when I think of a Wolf 190, I'm talking about the A's radial engine. The radial engines just look much better. Oh, I didn't look at the bomb reload, did I? I should have done that. I'll tell you what, we'll do that now. Thank you for that, Cleeks. I should imagine you're extremely busy, Eek. So let's just get the D back up again. Bombs and rockets, what have we got? One 250 pound bomb and a couple of uh, WGR 21s, sort of gun emplacement style. If you look at the. Uh... Oh, yeah, that's the other difference. You're lacking the rockets. Well, the rockets don't make a huge difference, but they could be the difference between you finishing off a target and not. You've just got the one 250 kilogram bomb. Thank you for that, Cleats. Appreciate the, the uh, nod there. So now let's try and get into the A8. And whilst we're waiting, I'm just doing something in the background. Oops, a daisy. I didn't really want to give you that extraneous sound, but there you go. Okay. All set up. Okay, so game, would you like to plop me into a game? And we'll go and try and do some more horizontal boom zooming, maybe take out a gun emplacement or two along the way. Um, well, the queue times are limited. So, um, so in prime time, these are actually quite long queues, longer than I would expect. This one particularly is longer than I would expect. Um, but they're capped out at 123. And by the time about 130, if you get to 130, you'll get an all bot battle. So. The worst is you unless the game's crashed on you, you'll get a, 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 a minute, of, uh, sorry, a wait of around about one minute thirty seconds. Um, otherwise, thirty forty seconds is pretty normal. If you're in a flight, it might be a bit longer because obviously the matchmaking has to find a flight to match you up with, which takes a bit longer. Certainly nothing like version one of the game, where I understand the, the weights could be ex enormously long. Okay, I am top tier, not best suited for attacking the airfield. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this upper garrison and then assess the situation. What have we got? Enemy 265. Oh, we've got... okay. We have a disadvantage on our team. I won't be rude and point out what it is. Some of you may have spotted it already. You never know. It might be one of those uh, occasions where it's not a disadvantage. Okay. I'm going to ask for help. And I'm also going to try, going to try and drop my bomb. Don't let the air defence aircraft shoot me, please. I 
don't have rockets. I have just fired them, but I don't have them. So I need to get away. Just fly away and come back. How much further are you going to chase me? That far and no further. Okay, good. Distinct lack of aircraft, so the air defence aircraft had literally nothing else to do but chase me. Okay, good. Right, let's go and see if we can do a single point of damage at the airfield. Not necessary. Let's pick up repairs then if we can. Okay. That KI-102 can actually outturn me, incidentally. I'm going to have to be very careful with that. Flying away at the moment, so I'll probably go in at the... I don't really want to be fighting the P-51A either. Let's hope air fight is going to... Yes, I mentioned air fight. I didn't mean to do that. What's wrong with your firing air? No, shush. Don't comment on it. thought about going for the Focke Wolf. I decided to go for this one instead. Oops, bit of a twitch on the mouse there. Lovely. Well, you can see there's nothing wrong with the guns. I still haven't picked up my repairs. I don't even know that I can. No, I can. I can. I'm going to take the chance while I have it, even though I should have lined up that aircraft for a, f a firing solution. My teammates are doing it for me. Okay, air fight. There you go. He's doing well. Look. 4,000, 4,500 and his BF-109G. Notorious for not performing particularly well is our friend, but there's nothing wrong with his performance in this battle. Nicely done, sir. Oh, I wish I'd killed that. Done here. Uh, there's a lot of red over the enemy garrison for some reason. An awful lot of red. Okay. Now again, trying to keep this aircraft as part of a group. We only got ground attackers heading towards the garrison effectively. Don't really want to go in and take on fighters and whatnot. I'm going to fly back to the airfield and then work my way to the garrison. Solfuse Dabonge. Wow, that's some name. Thank you very much for your follow. Lovely to have you along. On the ground attacker. Oh, he's almost dead, so that's pointless. Uh, let's just go and try and establish superiority then. Why not? We have the opportunity. I have a burn. Oh, I have an aircraft I can shoot. That'll probably do it. Uh, no, okay. Can I get the bomb? No, don't be greedy. Number of times I've thrown my aircraft into the ground because I'm greedy. Hmm. Definitely don't want to be going head on at this. as much as I've done some criticals I can see. 
probably done internal module damage as opposed to HP damage. Doesn't really matter, he's not going to last much longer. There we go. Got him just in time. There you go. Made it look uh, as if it was a really good aircraft. It can be. Um, it can be if it's flown well and you know what you're doing. And with that, I completed the tech tree fly through of the combined multi role fighter line of the German nation as featured in the Universal Soldier event. Plus, as you saw, that last battle was the Tier 7 Premium Focke Wolf 190A8 as a bonus. If you're interested in a particular aircraft, use the link below the stream to jump to the correct section of the video. Uh, I trust you found that all helpful and enjoyable. If you did, I hope you'll come back and see my future content. But until then, this is the Noble Q signing off.